Hey, 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 welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today on Dave Cooper Live. It is Monday, uh, the week after a seriously busy week. And man, did we have fun. So, and as always, listen, I want to start off this Monday because we do have a sponsor, uh, Garcia Strongberg out of West Palm Beach, Florida is our sponsor of today's show. And for over 25 years, Garcia Strongberg has been involved in a multitude of development projects located throughout the United States and globally. So uh, if you don't know Garcia Strongberg, they are a serious player. I am sure you've stayed in one of their resorts that they have designed somewhere in this world. They are amazing, amazing architects, designers, musicians, you name it. So I just want to say thank you very much, George and Peter. Uh, for sponsoring this episode today. So with that said, thank you, Garcia Strongberg out of West Palm Beach, Florida. They are moving in to the offsite construction world as are so many other architects in this space. All right, with that said, that is out of the way. Let's talk about who is gonna be on the show today. The one, the only, Henry Mickelberg from France is joining us today. If you don't know Henry, Henry has been part of this show on many occasions in the audience. I don't believe we've ever had him on the live stream. He is a guru internationally when it comes to volumetric construction, a big advocate for our industry. Uh, and, and in my world, he's becoming somewhat of a friend. So I, I look forward to bringing him on. So let's do that. Hey, Henry. Hello, David. Welcome, Hi, welcome to the show, my friend. Well, thank you for having me on. You know, I, I think this is great. I know we've been doing a little connection issues there, so we may try different things. But Henry, right now you're in France. I'm in, yeah. I'm in Connecticut. And we are able to collaborate just like this industry is starting to collaborate. So welcome to the show. Yeah, well, it's um, yeah, no, it's great to be um, Isn't technology amazing? It, it is amazing. It is amazing. And it's, and it's changing the way we do everything to include communicate these days, right? Yeah, and hopefully it'll keep working. But yeah, you know, I am in the middle of the woods, in the middle of uh, middle line, so yeah, you know, but, bear with me. Yep, that's all right. We're, well, we'll keep rolling with it and see what happens. So, Henry, why don't you give everybody just uh, from the moment you were born to this very moment in time right now, within five minutes, just a quick background on who Henry Mickelberg is. Crikey. Um Well, I'm, I'm sort of uh, an eclectic mix of. Uh, experiences and lifestyle and, and work rights. Uh, I was born in San Francisco. I was there for a very short time. Uh, then lived in Sweden for a bit. Uh, then I was in the UK and then I went back to Sweden. Uh, most of my sort of formative stuff and university and things was in the UK. Um, and and I, I got into, I did civil engineering uh, at uh, college and uh, then went through the usual site management, uh, site engineer, site management, uh, design management, bid management, uh, sort of hierarchy, if you like, uh, of main contractors or, or GCs, I suppose you call them in the States. Um, and and, and I, did a, I did a management master's at the end of uh, the 90s, uh, which made me even more odd uh, as far as trying to pigeonhole me uh, as, as, a, as a construction person, as the construction industry likes to do. Um, I then went from there to do some uh, big government contracts on the USAF work, a lot of sailing work um, and, and MOD stuff uh, for AMEC, who were a big company, um, had a global presence. Uh, and then I went in the late noughties, I got into, I moved away from main contracting into uh, a boutique uh, project process controls um, consultancy. Uh, which took me uh, around the world a bit more. Uh, maybe change my whole sort of mindset into a far more sort of self-starting mindset than, than being part of a, a global GC. Um, and uh, then in, in 2010, I, we jacked it all in and we, uh, we sold up and we moved to France and built a, took a couple of years off and built a, a, a sort of fake passive house here, which I'm sitting in, um, which has been emotional, but enjoyable. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've been living in, living in the woods in France for the last 10 years, and uh, I just go wherever I have to go in the world. Yeah. Or I did before COVID. I love it. I love it. I love living in the woods. I live somewhat in the woods as well, and I agree with you. Woods you know? is good. It is good. Uh, it is. Yeah. I like to think of myself as a slightly cultured redneck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. We just came up with another T-shirt. The wood is good. 
<laughs> so Mark, Mark Willie's uh, joining. I can see him in the background. He's he's already apologizing for covering your face with his long post. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't see. This is annoying. I can't see the face, and it, it's a lot easier to heckle from the sidelines than it is to be honest. That's yeah, yeah. Well, I know it is. I, well, guess what? We're gonna. So we have a lot of people joining already. I think today's kind of just an open conversation. We were talking about it, and I said, you know what? Somebody that always has something super intelligent to say, somebody that I, I respect, such as yourself. Um, you know, uh, I, I thought today just kind of wrapping up all of the things that, you know, have been going on over the last few weeks and then really getting into the Home Innovation Research Lab. Ed Hudson did a presentation at the Building Systems Week this week at the NAHB. And they, we were talking about barriers to offsite construction. And today we're going to mainly focus on volumetric, but we can touch on panelize if we want to. I see Jerry McCahey's in the audience as well today. Hi, Jerry. Um, so, but why don't, why don't we just say hi to a few people real quick? Because uh, the way the comments filled up, it may get out of control on us. So but, uh, let's see what we got. You're just abusing me, Dave. That's what we'll do. Well, yeah, Mark, Mark's looking to, to abuse, abuse you. Uh, so let's see it here. So we have Mark Willie covering up our faces. Sorry to cover up your face with my wordy post, but I want to have you join Brett Little. Yeah, we have Brett Little on this BS Friday as we're hosting the Green Home Institute Net Zero Residential pre-conference launch on BS Friday. So that would be Mark and I hosting that, and that's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so he's asking you if you'd like to attend. So I'm yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, it's 1, 1, 1 p.m. Eastern time. It's 7 p.m. here, hence the lights just come on. Um, so if it's a Friday night, you know, and I'm not forced to go out and eat and drink somewhere, then my second favorite thing to do is to listen to BS Friday. I love it. Hey, listen, man, I, you know, being able to even go out and eat and drink these days is almost a privilege, it feels like, right? Um, yeah. So we got Joel Hutchins. What's happening? Good old Joel. Good afternoon. Cannot wait to hear some insights from the guru himself. Yeah, he only calls me a guru because he asked me about my lifestyle and fashion most of the time. That's what it is. Is that what it is? Yeah. Well, you know, Joel's another one who's never short for words. No, Joel's a really clever bloke. I wish I knew half what Joel knows. Yeah, right. And he's a young bloke too, so he's got a lot more to go. Yeah, he's young, good looking, clever. I hate him. That's right. So he's. I'm nicknaming. I'm going to nickname him the bloke. All right, <laughs> you're the bloke now, Joel. All right, Anthony Good. All in. Big change coming to the industry. Good to be back with everyone exploring modular and advanced building performance. So, Anthony, good to hear from you. It's been a while. So I hope you're off doing wonderful things in your careers, just going through the roof. All right, moving on. We got good old Jerry McCahey. Good morning, Henry, from the Irish buddy on the West Coast. Yeah, Jerry's a legend. He is a legend. His, his dad's a legend too. You know, I mean, the whole family yeah. just absolutely amazing on everything they've done. Yeah. Um, Andrew Seely, howdy y'all. This is going to be a good one. Absolutely. Yeah, not in any professional capacity. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it is uh, seven o'clock there. Have you already started with your food and beverage? <laughs> no, I, I promise you, it's still it's it's gazers. Yeah, just some bubbly Sorry. water. All right, yeah, just busy. We got uh, Buzz Holitzer. What's happening, Buzz? Happy BS Monday. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. All right. So Joel says it's payback time for Henry. It always is. I, I can. Henry's not scared. I, I'm a little scared, but Henry's not scared. All yeah, right. You gotta, you gotta find me, Joe. Let, let's let let's hop into a little meat and potatoes. And listen, anybody from the off audience, this is a free flow conversation, which Henry and I talked about because. Uh, one Henry has a great accent, like Joel and others, and 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 uh, out there. And I think that this could be just a fun, open conversation on what's going on with our industry. Why is there such a slow adoption uh, to volumetric construction? We talked about it all week at the NAHB. Now I'm opening it up to everybody, and I want to hear people's opinion on you know why the slow adoption <coughs> to volumetric construction. What what are your thoughts on this, Henry? Yeah, uh, well, it's, I mean, you've got to think about a volumetric product. You know, let's ignore the old stuff, but the new cool volumetric stuff like, you know, Marriott hotels and System M hotels and uh, Grey Star student accommodation, the stuff that's completely finished. Uh, it's indistinguishable from the, the real product. Uh, that's right, I mean, the real product. I mean, it's maybe the same stuff as, as normal construction, but. 
if actually you know, the really high quality volumetric stuff has probably only been around for the last nine years. Um, and, and the real game changers that have pushed it about the game have been probably Citizen M, uh, Graystar, uh, and Marit. So when, when we're looking at uh, volumetric, it's good when we're talking about a completely finished 3D chunk of the building, whatever that might be. Uh, it's a mixture of low rise, mid rise, and high rise. Um, and, and a lot of people still think, well, it, it's housing. Housing is volumetric, and, and of course, it can be. So um, it's horses for courses. Um, the industry is changing very rapidly. The MMC take up is, is really taking momentum now. And the step changes we're seeing in the last year or two, you know, showing that the industry is evolving, it is adapting, um, and, and actually, you know, COVID has, has pushed it on as well. Um, but also, again, COVID has completely changed the whole uh, marketplace for volumetric. So, uh, again, it, it's I can do all the generic reasons why people they say oh, it's. It's more expensive, uh, you know, we don't know about the quality. There's a lot of historical ideas of what a prefab building might be like and pre you know, preconceptions about quality issues and that sort of thing. And just a basic lack of understanding from it. Huge basic issue is if you don't think modular volumetric from the outset, forget it. You know, you can't, as soon as, as, soon as a project has got a permit, then you're done for, you know, a planning permission. Um, it's too late. It's got to be, right, we're going to do this uh, in volumetric from the get-go. And, and actually, you know, it, 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 uh, it takes a leap of faith to do that. And also, <laughs> at the end of the day, we're in a profit-based game here. This is why we do, we do stuff for profit. Okay, you know, there's various interpretations of those things, but fundamentally, you know, it's got to be, the key drivers have to be there to do that. And I just don't think really that the key drivers have been have evolved enough so that most stakeholders can make the informed decision to do it. This sure. Way. So, yeah, I mean, you made a comment, and this is a comment that's come up throughout the week this past week is, you know, since COVID, you know, volumetric modular, whatever we call it, has been gaining more and more traction in the industry. Offsite in general has gained yeah. more traction and attention sure. and growth. Um, now, the, the question I always have is, you know, what's stopping this growth? Is it, like you said, is it the lack of people's understanding and education on the values, on the cost benefits, right? Because it comes down to the wallet. And do, do people such as, you know, larger builders, especially in the multifamily world, uh, do they have enough information to understand the full life cycle savings of volumetric versus traditional site built stuff? All the way through warranties and issues somebody deals with. Uh, no, of course they don't. Um, the industry is based around, well, I, I'm, I'm a quantity surveyor, I'm a project manager, I'm an engineer. Um, all these things with offsite all blur into one. So the, the, the traditional ways of judging value in construction industry are, are all being skewed by the offsite world. And, and those, those things don't catch up. And the way that you a client measures value uh, and, and his key drivers for that project are based around the old school traditional way of, of measuring value. Um, so I, I can't say, you know, if we're talking about a 44 story high student accommodation, 500 key scheme uh, in Croydon, as per the Greystar scheme, it's a very different proposition to a three story high uh, residential project using a timber volumetric solution so on the east coast or something like that in the states um so the, the variability is there for sure in that, in that question um all i can say is the people who are doing it right tend to be people who have in really vertically integrated delivery solutions for this so they own the site they own the timeline they control everything they, they do the gc and they and they manufacture as well and they have their own team of designers and consultants are all in that collective uh, delivery vehicle, if you like. 
and they're certainly the people that are, you know, that are doing it right, and they can prove the efficiencies. Um, on a typical Citizen N now, on, on 200 keys, you'll turn it around and save six months on the program. Yeah. And, uh, and that equates to about $3 million in, in revenue in some way like Seattle. So it's, it's quite easy to do these basic sort of key driver metrics, if you like, and say, right, guys, if we do it like this, it's going to do, it's going to save us this. Or it might be for a situation in, um, as we had it at uh, Rue de Croissant in, in Paris, where it was an incredibly tight site. The planning commission didn't allow you to be on site for more than one year. Uh, it wasn't cost effective to do it in volumetric, but you had to do it because that particular driver of the program dictated it was the only solution. So it all comes down to, do we want to do like this? What are the benefits of doing it? Can we prove the benefits of doing it? And when you, once you've got a client that can do that, then the decision gets a lot easier. Um, and I just don't think the industry at the moment is able to do that convincingly and convince clients to do an off-site, particularly volumetric solution from the get-go. So that's probably right. the reason why that's working. And that's the reason why people who are doing it in the vertically integrated way are doing it very well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it sounds like it's ripe for uh, people that consult in this industry and really understand it to help a company go to, you know, uh, off-site volumetric construction, right? I mean, it's, it's like anything else. You're either going to learn the hard way or the, the almost hard way and the almost hard way is by hiring somebody to help you through it, right? Um, what do you, I mean? Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's really all about control. Uh, you know, the off-site world is all about control, just being right. a mega maniac, just control oh, every damn thing you can. Um, it, it's not any clearer than that, but unfortunately, the control doesn't just mean around the product. It's about the whole project holistically, all projects. Um, you know, with the way we're looking at schemes at the moment where you may have a something called a housing association in the UK, um, which is sort of not-for-profit, government-backed uh, housing solution. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they come under very many different guises around the world how these things are, are rolled out, but effectively it's that. Um, and, and we they said, well, we'd like to do this project or these five projects in an off-site solution. Um, and you say, well, don't bother. You know, give us a hundred of your sites to look at. Uh, and, and with modern ways of assessing sites, you can come up incredibly quick, quickly with sort of hundred data points on those possible sites. And all of a sudden, you can predict what would be the best solution over fifty of those sites, for example. And, and, and the data that we provide is the same data, whether it's a traditional construction or MMC. That's the thing. You've got to, it's all about the best interests of the project, regardless right. of the solution. And sometimes the best solution will not be an MMC. And we'd certainly, you know, we'd certainly advise people not to do that. Um, unless you can prove it's a better solution. But then if you've got 50 sites and 50 houses, all of a sudden you've got a very, very different proposition to just approaching projects on the project by project basis. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Let's, let's key drivers, that's all it is, key drivers. Just proving what the key drivers are. Yeah, absolutely. What, what's the data and what, what's making it happen? I, I agree with that. So speaking yeah. of data, mm. here's your body, Joel. Hey, does the complete vertical integration scare you? What about all the SMEs? Uh, does it scare me? No, Joel, it doesn't scare me. Um, it is what it is. Um, the proof is in the pudding of these delivery vehicles, but I get your point, Joel. The, the, is the future of the, of the off-site volumetric construction industry, whether it be volumetric, uh, bathroom pods, or, or panelized system, what we call Cat 1, 2, 3, um, is it in harnessing digitization and, and turning, you know, stopping this downward decline in productivity and being smart about it and getting back up to where other industries are? Absolutely. Unfortunately, that does require a sort of global sharing of data that is entirely at odds to the competitive advantage of this whole profit-based mm -hmm. paradigm that we've got. So, you know, these guys like Citizen M. Graystar are doing this vertical integration because it suits them very well, and they are digitizing their products. But it's all much—it's all very much in house. So, 
um, in, in the normal construction world, we know what various materials are and we know we have choices to buy them, where to buy them, we can go out to various places all around the world right. and buy different materials. You just don't have that variety of choice in the MMC world. And that's the step change that's got to happen. And that, unfortunately, requires some kind of catalyst to move people's mindset away from the project by project in house competitive advantage part of it. Uh, yeah. So that's no. what you well, I agree with that. But, um, you know, so we'll throw some we'll throw some more wrenches into this conversation. I'm going to do another comment here. Uh, Jerry says that's why people need to talk to people with experience like Henry. As Einstein said, there is no knowledge without experience. Hey, listen, Henry, I mean, any any time you can have your name mentioned in the same uh, sentence with Einstein, that's a pretty good day. Yeah. I, I don't <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then George Ryman said, vertical in integration can work if you commit to it, unlike my previous employer. Yes. Well, we're not going to yeah. make Oh, there's so much. In the, the vertical integration part is, you know, if, if you, it's, again, it comes back to control. It's all about control. If you do, you own the site. Great. In which case, you haven't got to worry about convincing anyone other than yourself about the, the benefits of the key drivers. Um, can you do the main contracting part of it? Yes. Can you manage all of the, you know, the, the legal requirements and, 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 and all of the insurances and the prime contracting uh, stuff and the health and safety stuff? Yes. It, it, and all the other myriad of things that go on with, with it um, that are really just general contracting or main contracting skill sets. Um, you can't just go and say, well, hey, we're a volumetric provider. We, we can right. deliver this, this project. You can't. You have to understand the overall construction and all the other stuff that goes with it, um, because you're effectively just say Sixth Avenue, for example, the Marriott on Sixth is about a 50-50 split of volumetric and GC works. Um, so you've got to understand everything. Um, but yeah, the, the, if you can control it and be virtually integrated, you'll do very well. But again, right. it, you will still be uh, an organisation using that to the benefit of your own competitive advantage. And that doesn't tend to sit well with the let's share everything for everyone and improve the industry right. holistically. Um, and, and I think digitization is, is the key to unlocking that. It's just about controlling how the two worlds of competitive advantage and almost like a pseudo open sourcing of products uh, in a digitized platform can, can work. Really. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. You know, that I mean, that's one of the things in this home innovation research labs that they talked about is, you know, technology is going to be one of the drivers that can change us moving forward and how we think. So, but one of the other uh, barriers that they were talking about uh, was more just a cultural barrier. You know, they're saying, you know, and this is a 2019 survey of home builders and what they were saying, what we're doing now works fine, right? So you have, uh, I always use Margaret Whalen's comment, PMS, pale mail and stale sitting at the top, filling their pockets with money. Um, why do they want to rock the boat? Why do they want, you know, if they're okay with their margins or they're okay with how things are going, why, why should they change? Well, that's a fine question. I mean, I'd have to look at the books. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you don't change it. You know, this is the thing. Um, I'm, I'm massively objective about this whole offside industry, really. Um, I, I, I don't say, think it's it's better per se. It either is or it isn't, and that comes down to the data and proving it. So if you can take, for example, you know the kind of guys you're talking about, and sit down with them in the industry and say, well, look, guys, you do it like this. If we did it like this and we did made these changes, then this will happen. Hey, make an informed decision, and the informed decision might be actually why change it. It works fine. You know, I, I mean, I'm a guru, but I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not going around preaching. Um, <laughs> it, just, it all comes down to, is it a better solution? Yes. Right. Why is it? For these reasons. Okay, well, let's do it for those reasons. It's, it's not a, you know, nothing if not objective about it. Yeah, yeah. But, you, uh, but if, you go, if you then say, well, hang on, guys, we've got, we've got the potential to, to do uh, – 50,000 homes in a year, and you go, well, oh, hang on, guys, that changes things, you know? Why wouldn't you manufacture it? I mean, it, the industry's in a sort of, it makes cars like a sort of hand-built 
uh, coach worked a uh, quarter of a million dollar Aston Martin or something, um, whereas it needs to move into a sort of Volkswagen manufacturing uh, system. And the way to do that is all just by control and introducing paint by numbers processes, you know, all, all the stuff that industry, other industries like cars and aviation does. Um, DFMA the hell out of things, improve it, get the efficiencies in there. So you can say, you know, if we do this, the efficiencies are this. So why would you not want to do it? And then you're moving into things like, I mean, Joe McCarthy, you know, Joe's, he, he's, a, he, he's a great example. You know, the Fiat system is just so, it's just so demonstrably better in every way. And in and also in the other nice to have ways like social value and, and environmentally and all these types of things. And, um, but again, that's that's just it's obvious. It's just about proving the benefits. And, and if the benefits aren't there, you can't prove them. Don't do it. Don't change. Yeah, you make your sure. money. Don't change. The industry doesn't have to change, Jerry says, because survival is not mandatory. Look at travel agents, the tax industry, etc. So I mean, that's what you're saying. Yep. <laughs> what, yeah. What I'm saying is. It doesn't need to, and it's, if it's not a better solution, right. don't do it. Love it, love it. But there are so many variables that what makes it a better solution. That's the point. Well, is it the right solution? Because you're right, volumetric modular isn't the right solution for every project out there. So we, are, we already know that, and I get it. It comes down to the data. It comes down to the does it make sense financially and physically for <laughs> us as a company, right? <laughs> It's, it's like any complicated solution, any, anything that's complicated, you just got to break it down into the manageable chunks. Yeah. And that's about identifying the key drivers and, and how you measure the, the metrics and benefits of it. Um, and, and that's something I've been fortunate enough to be working on for, for you know, eight years now in, in this soft side right. uh, Just bringing in the modern tech and the modern controls and procedures to, to, to do that. Um, well, I think I think that's a whole show right there, Henry. We should talk about how we have an entire show talking about what are the key drivers in tech. And I know that's probably part of your DNA and what you're not putting out to the world. And that's probably what you get paid for. But it would be a fun thing to talk about. And I think it would drive a pretty global conversation. Yeah. Um, well, at the moment, it depends what you call volumetric. You can have a timber frame volumetric you know, right. like champion and girl and guys like that doing, which is great. A lot of the stuff in the US is timber, you know, you know number timber, you know, made of wood, um, but which is okay. That's a low-rise market, maybe to a mid-rise market. Um, the, you know, the, the the really cool volumetric that I've been involved with is the high-rise, twenty-plus stories, um, you know, annoyingly four-star hotels, and strangely, they've all gone out since COVID. So. Yeah, the world is where it is and it's a different thing now so you've got to move and adapt to the product needs and there's always been um a, a re you know requirement for for housing right. and housing has never been served properly so absolutely it, the future has got to be using the tech using the improvements sharing this knowledge of how to do things really so that everyone has a better chance of having you know, a more affordable and a better home effectively but right. we're moving into the realms of philanthropy yeah, yeah. And, and and the whole industry is predicated upon profit it's a profit-based game so we've got to move to a more sort of philanthropic game and, and normally that works via legislation by government it certainly does with health and safety legislation environmental legislation that sort of thing um, so uh, a solution would be for, for, for governments to legislate uh, MNC, um, uh, uh, mandatory MNC percentages for projects. Um, but I think that's a long time coming. Honestly, I, I know I'm, I'm getting old and cynical, and, and, but I'm pragmatic. Um, the it, it, competitive advantage is the only thing that's going to really make a difference. You know, um, yeah, yeah. the iPhone came along and it took all these different things that phones did, stuffed them all in one place. Um, that's what's, that's what's going to happen now, and it's got to, it's got to, it'll live in digitization for sure, definitely. It's just a case what? of 
the, the right way of, of, of getting that out to everybody so that it's usable for, on, a, on a, a very shared basis rather than just a we're going right. to we're going to be more competitive than we doing this by doing this. Well, let's hop let's hop into some comments here real quick. So Jennifer was saying, you know, when you talk about the step change into the catalyst for further adoption of MMC, how much of that do you think is driven by the government? We just kind of talked a little bit about this versus driven by the builder developer versus driven by the people. So um, you're feeling it's going to be more driven for it to really happen by the governments? Uh, yeah, on, on the thing about, there are a lot of good people trying to change and influence MMC in government departments. Yep. Um, but it's, which is great. Is that going to happen? No, it just isn't. Um, the the way the governments, so well, it's not just in the UK government particularly, in the French government, are dealing with this is, is to try pilot schemes for, for things. Um, and that might be, oh great, we're going to pilot 750 homes, which is 0.03% of, of the, the annual homes requirement. And we're going to do it in MNC. Uh, and those pilots just are self-defeating um, because, the, one, they're not big enough. They're spread over various sites, so all the variables come into it. And again, everything is, is dealt with on a sort of stage basis. Um, so with the best one in the world, I don't think, um, unless someone can fall through a white paper that gets to a point where someone convinces someone to, you know, to actually say, thou shalt use 20% MMC for the following reasons, um, then I don't think it'll happen. But again, in order to convince someone in government to do things for the following reasons, they have to justify the key drivers to, to do that. That's how I know it is. And, 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 and really, again, we, we're still fighting this profit-based profit, profit -based paradigm of, of you know, the de developers develop for profit. Absolutely. So, yeah, tough, it's a tough call. Um, it is a tough call. Uh, and that's why I think it's going to be something that will come along with the competitive advantage um, to show the efficiencies, demonstrate to people that if you do it, if you, if you do it this way, the efficiencies are there. So therefore, it's a no-brainer. Um, but it does need to change in mindset. Right, the culture needs to change for sure. So here, I know I know somebody that can write a white paper for this and pretty intelligent. Good old yeah. Dr. Brett Musson, Dr. Musson. My research looks at market failure. Why doesn't shortage and high price drive up supply? Uh, well, are we talking about shortage of a fully finished volumetric unit? That's a good um, Yeah, I mean, if, if Brent, um, Dr. Musson, if, if, um, if, uh, if we're talking about, uh, a, let's say, a volumetric product that is available on the market that ticks all the boxes, um, why, why isn't it available? A lot of that's to do with logistics and, and ge geography. Um, <laughs> you know, to, to think about a volumetric product is you've got to get it to where it's got to be. Um, you, frankly, you know, some of the guys in the US have been some weird stuff when it comes to uh, putting volumetric stuff together. Um, I think Europe's probably got it down a bit better. Um, we certainly, the way, the way we deal with it is very much a sort of saying, well, look, uh, in this module, you've got a steel cage. That's the, once you once you've got the cages sorted out, you, the rest of it's pretty easy. Um, the facade is is a different thing. You take that as a separate item. It's like dear for me. Uh, and then you've got the fit out. So that doesn't seem to be it doesn't seem to work like that. So you know, I'll, I'll, for me, I'll identify a steel steel cage manufacturer because they're really good at making steel cages and welding them up and putting them in clever rotating jigs and things, all the stuff that you just don't have in a modular factory. Then you go to a specific facade manufacturer to make the facades, and then you put them all in one place and then bring all the expensive bits and pieces from the global supply chain for whoever it is. Uh, you check it all off, you QR code it, you, you, you have a it's just a completely infallible way of, of controlling that uh, assembly and manufacture, and then you ship it to where it needs to be. Um, in the US, You've got an east and west. East and west coast are very different to the middle, as we know. If you truck something, um, to, to, to truck a, a volumetric module in the States, 400 road miles is the same cost as shipping it from uh, Gdansk in Poland to New York. Um, yeah. And do you do, is that a sustainable situation to actually buy a product from? I don't think so. So I think to try and answer your question, it's 
a lot of it's about geography um, and, and, and who's invested in actually buying that product. So. Very true. Very true. Well, he had a follow up transportation logistics is part of the cost, no? Yeah, of course it is. Yeah, everything, I mean, everything should be demonstrated in an open book style, frankly. You say, well, this is the factory output cost, these insurances, this is the cost, what it costs to ship it, this is what it costs to lift it, install it, set it for stuff. Um, but normally, <laughs> uh, you know, overhead profit and things are about 15%, shipping is about 10%, and installation is about 8%. So right. when you start pulling back those things, um, you, you end up pulling natural factory output costs considerably. Uh, and at the end of the day, this comes down to uh, how much stuff can you make? If you can make a thousand products, they're going to be so much cheaper than making a hundred products. Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Let's, uh, Joel, Joel wrote a book. Here we go. If we had a better way to design and share data, there is no need for vertical integration. We are seeing companies preach vertical integration, but then using old school ways to manage it equals taxi companies that try to control the market. How are they? I think he meant going, doing either way. Uh, well, that's a different from experience, thought. Yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> it's really easy to think, oh, great. You know, all we've got to do is join these dots up to get a vertically integrated solution. Right. Well, I've got some money. I could buy a site. I know a guy that does groundworks. You know, I know, I know a guy. He, I, know, I know a modular factory. Let's get it done. It's, it's, yeah. You know, it, it's, a, it's a complete paint by numbers uh, yeah. process that is just like cradle to grave. Go, no goes. That's the, the way I work it is 16 stages. They've all got go, no goes in them. And, and there's just at the, the detail in it is, 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 is remarkable. Um, and again, it's just about control. If you can control the situation, great. But like, like Joel says, tech comes into that hugely. Why, why, the fact that people are going out issuing 2D information and tender information to get a product is ridiculous. It should all be in one, fully coordinated, fully digitized, fully parametric model that everybody works on. Um, and ideally, you, you, you dry run the thing in 4D. Um, yeah. 4D planning is a beautiful thing. So, yeah, to, uh, to ask Joel's question, you know, Joel and I are seen off the same hymn sheet. We know where it's got to be. Um, but, yeah, vertical, I mean, vertical integration, it works. The guys that are doing well, it does work very well. But... Um, Again, it doesn't help the industry on the whole other than going, wow, that's a really cool volumetric building. So exemplars are cool, but yep. that's not where we are. It's got to, it's got to change. The mind's got to change. So let's let's talk about this, Larry. So vertical integration. I mean, what do you think are going to be the biggest drivers for a manufacturer or a company that figures out the process and really automates and really takes things to the next level? Do you, what, what do you what do you see as the future? Who's gonna who's gonna be the big disruptor in our space? Um, and anyone can get their their products optimized, demonstrate the efficiencies, um, and get a full file to factory system in place. That's where it's at. Yeah. Just again, I'll, I'll take you back to the car analogy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Very, very, very few humans touch a car when it goes down the production line, other than to check it's right. Yeah. Um, so it, it's got to be the way. I mean, it's just volumetric products are just made of stuff. It's just stuff. You know, and once you know how much stuff you've got, what it's made of, where it comes from, what it complies to, what it conforms to, um, how that analog works in different countries and different you know code requirements and um, that, it's about that, you know, it's, it's about knowing, because I can tell you, if you go to Canada, the fire and the wind are different, it's not to, to, to the US. Yeah. In France, different fire, different wind, apparently. So, um, you know, it's, it's all about standardizing something, but making sure that you have covered all the eventualities in the changes of that product. Um, so, so definitely, yeah. and the way to do that is digitize. Sure. Har harness technology. So what are, you, what are you seeing? I mean, you are kind of global on this and connected, you know, around the world, uh, Middle Eastern countries, Europe, everywhere. So what what are, you, what are you seeing that's out there now? Is there some is there some up and coming things that the rest of us will be surprised when we see it? 
Um, as a product, you know, what are we talking about? The, the, the volumetric, because that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. Uh, Asia, Singapore, the PPVC, they call it. They just love concrete modules, don't they? They just love concrete. And, and I spoke to the lady who, uh, who runs it up at, at a show last year, and, and, and she said, it's just, a, it's just a cultural perception about the integrity and the robustness of that product that they're made in concrete. Yeah. So I don't think, I don't think age is going to change much from, from, from concrete, PPVC, but they do it well. Um, and they're going really high now, doing some really cool stuff. Um, housing, low rise housing is going to be all about approaching a program of works across multiple sites. Mm -hmm. That's where it's at. Okay. So if you can say, guys, look, we can, there's some beautiful front end technology where we, we can get so much data that's available in the public domain and in, you know, pay for domains that give you so much information about a site that you don't have to go through the traditional way of site inspections, blah, 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 risk registers. It's just, you get so much data to start with and you've got LIDAR surveys, you've got trip advisors, you've got schools, you've got uh, access routes, you've got uh, heights of adjacent buildings, all the planning regulations, you know, permitting regulations, all that stuff is out there. Um, so, we, you know, we, we, we've got some guys we work with who have collated all this stuff and it's just a beautiful thing. So you can effectively say, you, know, you give us a hundred of your sites and, and this is where the efficiencies are. So anyone can, can come in and say, let's look at all your stuff. Right, we've assessed it. These are where the efficiencies are. and These are the options for offsite. That's a huge competitive advantage in the world's book. Um, the next best thing is, and then after that, the, the, the game changer is going to be the, the parametric digitization of products. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And we all know there's some people out there working on those things already as well. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I can't, I have to be as, as diplomatic as I can at the moment, but uh, that's where it's at. It's, yeah. that, that's where it's at. Um, and there's, there's a lot of people doing it, but they're doing it again as part of a, in-house competitive advantage based thing and what we need now is this sort of pseudo open source way of doing that right, um, right for sure and, uh, and 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 that that'll be the game changer definitely love it love it so anybody out there if you guys have any more questions we're going to wrap this up here in just a few moments but you know some of the things um uh that, that I was picking up that you were talking about and I wrote down, you know, you mentioned Gray Stars and others. To your knowledge, any European or other Asian uh, companies looking to expand here to the United States? Oh, I mean, volumetric companies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, there are. They're, they all are. You know, it, it's <laughs> it, it's really odd. Uh, again, it, it's preconceptions. Um, are, they, are they looking to expand or consult? I guess there's two different ways because some of them I know are looking to be consultants here, but maybe that includes ownership of some sort. I don't know. In the U.S., you need to have a presence in the U.S. in order to yeah. get your products into the U.S. And, and you need to understand the uh, the differences between the European markets um, and and the U.S. And also, you know, the U.S. is 50 different states. You need to know right. local code and all the stuff that goes with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so it's not it's not as if the products in the in in Europe aren't as good as the US products. They're better, frankly. They yeah. are way more sophisticated. Um and, and there are lots of them that want to get into the US. Um but it's it's uh, you need a presence there, you need someone who knows the market in the US to do that. Um, but yeah, there are lots. I'm I'm a, you know, people so you know, that's what we want to get into in the years. Sure. See where else is there? South America. Is South America. Yeah. So there's some really, there are some really joined up people in South America. You know, so there are some factories in South America that that um, they, they they have a good parent companies. They have a, a lot of um, skills and a lot of intelligence and, and a lot of uh, a, lot of, a lot of desire to, to do volumetric. Uh, and actually, I think you probably see some some movement from there. Um, yeah. If, if we can all just dispense with any sort of preconceptions about parts of the world and just accept the product as it is. Um, I, I mean, part of that is China. You know? So, again, let's ignore the stuff that's happened recently with regards to China. But purely from a – ironically, we can diss China, but I'm talking to you through a piece of uh, – 
software that's made in China. Um, so uh, there are some Chinese modular companies, but they right. e even when some of their products are good, it's about the transparency of what you're getting. So yeah. they could make something as nice as you like. Um, you know, example I give is uh, the Chinese make a Ducati replica. Now, from 20 yards away, it looks just like a Ducati. And you get up close and go, no, that's, that's not that anyway. So, but, um, but to the uninitiated, it's pretty good and the price is great. So, um, and, and China's an awfully long way away. And also, but it, it's really more about just getting the transparency and knowing what you're going to get. So, you know from the outset, whatever you're going to get is going to comply to the regs. It's going to be the right quality. It's going to be made exactly how you want it. And nothing is going to be different to what you asked for. Sure. You know, um, and again, that's all about control. Well, it is. And you, and you mentioned South America and even Anthony Goodday here has put up, you know, keep an eye on South America. And, you know, you're right. I'm having a ton of different conversations with people in South America that are looking at Florida and the Gulf Coast. Less money. They ship right up the Gulf. Uh, and, and they're doing some amazing things too. And they're all meeting the high wind zones and their designs and everything else. So I agree with you. I think South America is going to come, come onto the scene pretty heavily here over the next couple of years. But again, you've got to have someone on the ground there to give you the confidence that what you're getting is, is exactly what you want. And right. It's all about control. Volumetric is all about control. So, well, isn't that where you yeah. come in, Henry? Yeah, I try to. Um, but of course, uh, it, it's, it's all it, again. It's nothing. It's not rocket science. It's all just process control. Right. Procedures. Right. I mean, I did nuclear for a while, and that put me in pretty good stead um, because, for good reasons, you have to control the hell out of stuff in nuclear. Sure. Um, uh, so, so it, it makes you slightly sort of mainly retentive, if you like, about control. But um, it, it's uh, that, that's what it's about. I mean, there's probably you know, in a Marriott AC, there's about three hundred things. You know, there's about three hundred stuff. Whether it be a you know, light switch or it's a uh, you know a, a drape or something, it's, it's just this or a pillar. It's just stuff. Right. It's made of stuff. So you break down the stuff it's made of, and you treat it like a car. Yeah, yeah. So just just imagine you're trying to make build like a car. Just you know, optimize it, control it. That's all it is. So we're just making it harder than what it really is. Is what you're saying? No, it's not quite. It's quite complicated. I mean, when you get used to it, you think, oh, well, you know, what's the fuss? Yeah. But oh, that's it, it, right? It's when you know. But it, yeah, but it's, it is right. really quite complicated because there's a lot of stuff going on, but that's not to say that it can't be managed. Right. Well, listen. We we can we can fly you know things to Mars over the course of I don't know how many years and figure out the data to get there and how much you need. It, it boggles my mind why we struggle so much in the housing industry. Maybe, maybe yeah. we need to go hire people from NASA. Again, I'll go back to you know proper volumetric now is, is really not very old. I mean it's been around in, in one guise or another, but the, the sort of MMC part of it, the modern methods methods of construction. Construction, yeah. Um, is it only really getting its act together? And sure. but the 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 a big issue here is the rest of the construction industry is is a hundred years of siloed disciplines and, and the tech is changing all that. Yeah. You know, the tech and the products is changing all that. And thank goodness. Answer. It's about time. So <laughs> It's about time. You know, that's all I can say. So, Henry, man, we've been at this almost 55 minutes already. What do you think? Yeah, I'm bored now. It's probably time for pastis. <laughs> well, listen, I appreciate you taking time to join us today. Yeah, th thanks, for, thanks for jumping me on. And, uh... Yeah, I think it's all full of insight. And I'm serious. I, I, I think talking about the process that you go through, you know, whether we set up a uh, another interview like this or we do a private interview where people can join us and we can invite I think that's a very powerful thing. And I think that would be a lot of fun to really dive deeper into what is the thought process a company should be taking if they're mm -hmm. seriously looking at volumetric construction, no matter where you're in the world. Uh, and I, 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 I know you're the person to actually deliver that type of message to them. So think about that. That might be a fun thing to do, whether it's a live feed or we do it offline. Yeah, it's all, you know, the strategy stuff is, is just, that's where it's at now. It's just saying, okay, how do you do it? How do you make it better? How do you yeah. prove it? Yeah, for sure. For sure. So a couple more shout outs to some 
great supporters. Define, measure, analyze, improve, control. Dr. Mussen, always a pleasure having you join us. And same with you, Mr. Jerry. Proper Fios type panelization and U.S. brand. New, but still think it's about, what's that say? Kamlam. That's Irish. I think you're fine from that last bit. Is it? Is it, you know, yeah. it, all right, well, good. So, but either way, you know, and Jerry, we, we, we made a conscious decision to stick on volumetric today, but we can go down the panelized route next time we do this as well. What's, what's so nice about this is you go, well, I just do volumetric. Um, <laughs> I mean, luckily now I'm involved in, in bathroom pods and component, you know, panelized systems and that sort of thing. Yep. It doesn't matter. It comes down to what's the best solution for the, uh, the project or projects at hand. Um, and and you, you just go, well, hey, guys, uh, based upon this, these these are your options and you know, choose one. We'd recommend this. Simple as that. Yeah. And it, it might not be volumetric. It might not be. It might be a mixture. It might be, uh, yeah. or it might be traditional. For sure. So, well, listen, thank, Henry, thank so everybody listening. can get a hold of you. So LinkedIn, the best way to find you? Yeah, sure. Bombard me. Bombard you on LinkedIn. Well, and, and Henry's uh, always gets back to you, and he's never short on words. Uh, if you post some things, tag him. He loves the he loves the commentary side of it and the heckling side on the backside sometimes. But listen, uh, Henry, awesome conversation. You hang tight right there. We'll come back to you here in a moment. So listen, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. It's been a great conversation. Also want to, th again, thank Garcia Stromberg out of West Palm Beach, Florida. We are really looking forward to having architects like them join our industry. So uh, Garcia Stromberg Architects, West Palm Beach, Florida, one more thank you to you. All right, listen, everybody, we will see you tomorrow at one o'clock with Building Modular with Jennifer Cooper. We got some great things coming up. We have some great new uh, speakers, some of which are part of that UK government transition, uh, you know, our mandates that happened and, and talk a lot about that offsite. So we are reaching out globally to bring awareness to our country. And we're going to we're going to invite some of the top players in this industry to listen to what some of the other government officials around the world have to say about what changed in, in their world when they did their uh, volumetric and mandates for, like you said, the MMC, things of these nature. So, Henry, I hope you'll join us with that. And everybody Pleasure. else. Yeah, we thanks, guys. We will see you tomorrow at one o'clock. Thanks for joining. I'm Dave Cooper. Bye now.